Hello again, my friends. It's Roger today on a very, very fun thing. They have been going on for 30 years about does a spinning mass really lose weight? And I can say absolutely it does. And this goes back to February 1990. They, they are doing research with gyroscopes. Now everybody knows what a gyroscope is. Right? You spin it. Okay, well, you can spin it backwards, you can spin it forwards. Now, will it have any difference on the actual weight of this gyroscope in relation to the Earth? And yes, it absolutely will. And I can prove this, and I will show you with a motor, and then I will show you why this happens with our positive, attractive Earth. All the surface of the Earth will attract electrons to it. We know this. Electricity flows to Earth. That is not in doubt. Lightning flows to Earth. Static flows to Earth. Electricity flows to Earth. All electrons flow to Earth. So, let's go from there. All right, apparently, late last year, two guys uh, from Japan set up this experiment and they decide and they checked and they said yeah it's, it loses weight and I agree with 100 percent now this is spinning in the right hand rule on earth and it just spins and spins and it does not affect it one way or the other this one they spin with the left hand rule and it it just barely lifts up it's it only lifts up uh, five thousandths of one percent of its resting weight. So if it weighs a pound, it weighs a five, five thousandths of one percent of one pound. All right. So what does this tell us, though? The faster they spin the gyroscope, the fat, the less it it weighs. It, it it keeps going up and up and up and up. It's, you know, of course, it doesn't go up, but it keeps decreasing in the amount of down weight that it has on it. So, why is that? What what push, something's pushing it up? And I can tell you exactly what's pushing it up. We're going to see something. Uh, let me come over here to my oscilloscope. Hold on. Alright, hold on. This is not what you would call a standard issue oscilloscope. <laughs> it's a dual trace oscilloscope that I adapted. See that wooden box over there? All right, this here, I, I, I put a signal generator and um, a little, it's just a little circuit that I, I uh, incorporated in here to create, a gen to generate an impulse into something. And I am going to generate that impulse into this little motor. You see this little motor here? Everybody see these motors? Now, a motor is nothing more than a generator if you drive it backwards. If you go forward and... and, and put electricity into it, which I'm going to show this, see this right here, whoops, as I, as I attach this, I got to get that wire attached, alright, now, if I can hold it from not falling apart, alright, now you see, I can turn it to the left, I can turn it to the right, I'm going to spin it, that way there is, that is the normal right hand, uh, oh, actually that's a, that's a left hand spin, pushing upwards from the earth. This is the right hand spin. And that creates, a, a, it, what it's going to do is create a north and a south pole. You see? And I go the other direction, it goes in the other direction. So we know that we are spinning this, and this is nothing more than a gyroscope with some magnets and some wire in it. And why are the magnets and wire in there? They enhance the exact same thing that's happening in that, that gyroscope, which gives like one fifty thousandth of something, just almost not, nothing at all. This gives you some kick because we're in, we're pushing electrons into this against magnets. So now you got some serious action. And when you twist a backwards against it, it will generate electricity because the magnets now are forcing the coils to push electrons through the coils and you can harvest those. And I'm going to tell you something right now. You can make ma batteries out of nothing more than some heavy weights and you drive these up and then when you don't have electricity it comes back down, it drives this in reverse and you take the electricity back out of this. You get exactly back what you put in. So that's a free battery. They go crazy with this battery stuff. <laughs> 
bunch of rocks. You could have all the batteries you want. So, for the gyroscope experiment, we know if we spin with the right hand rule, that means the north is up this way, our south pole would be about the bottom, the north pole be at the top. The earth is a positive attractive source. This is a south pole, it's drawn towards the earth. The south pole negative of the gyroscope is pulled to earth, which is positive. Now, when we do the left hand spin, it reverses the pole, so the North Pole is down and the South Pole is up. The North Pole f pushes against the North Pole. Well, it's not North, a North Pole, but it is a North positive pull. Therefore, it pushes away and the gyroscope loses a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of its weight. The North Pole of the gyroscope pushes away from the positive Earth. Therefore, the gyroscope will increasingly repel Earth as it speeds up, losing weight. Case closed. Okay, you saw the gyroscope and that it is repelling Earth and losing weight. And we're going to go deep into all the electronics now. I think I have it figured out virtually right down to the last little bit. There's three apparently leptons. Let me show you this and then I'm going to leave it at this for today. Over here, I think I have constructed the actual particles that are what we live around. All right? And the photons are light. Photons have no charge. All right? So photons is light. The mass of the smallest photon is 0.0011 approximately atomic mass units. It has no charge. It's a net neutral charge photon is an electron and a positron back to back it's these two particles right here together just like that or separated in a box form two back to back so it's one of these or back to back it's this or in three packs you get up to this all right now w these are c called leptons there's a red a green and a blue the red is the least powerful in the longest wavelength. That's a middle, and the blue is powerful, a short wavelength. They're considered leptons. That is an electron. Now, they do have a positive and a negative to them. And the positron is nothing more than that, back to back against that. All right, it's called an upspin or a downspin. That spins this way. If it was turned around the other direction, it would spin the other way. That's all I can tell you. I, as far as I can tell, the entire universe is made up of those right there. Right there. Some of them are straight up, some of them are upside down. That's it. Everything else is made of that. Protons are made of that. There's no neutrons. The neutrons are nothing more than electrons and protons added together until you achieve neutrality and then one additional electron. They're always one electron mass higher than a proton. Protons, one point. Uh, anyway, they're one electron mass higher. It's 1.0073 or something. 1.0078 is the is the uh, neutron. So what we have here is a whole different way of looking at things. These three, the red, blue, and the green, are are strong enough to create frequencies in our visible range. When they go above this size, and they do, they go. I've I've, I've got them going all over the place. I can find them stable everywhere. And they are nothing more than alpha particles and um, gamma rays and X rays and all of the heavier particles. So they're missing everything. They, 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 you know, I, I think they're missing everything. Well, you make it up, make it up. You know, we're going to be going through it. There's a lot to go through here. We're going to take one step at a time, just the way that, that um, Rene Descartes says. You break everything down to its smallest pieces, you're going to get to the end. All right. Stay tuned, we're going to start into it.